So if he did all that, but you didn't really necessarily feel that way to him, but you were just enjoying all the expression and the showering of love and what or attention, attention. and all these things, then that's a love bomb. But if you met someone and you felt this intense thing from within, so essentially you felt what they felt, they're just more willing to act on it than you. There it is. Because you're more afraid and because you are giving into the construct of time. Well, it, it, this can't be real. This is too soon. Teach. Why am I feeling like this? Teach. You know what I'm saying? Teach. And that's what's throwing you off. Or you go into, I hate to say it, but this is true. You go into your girlfriend, and let me be more specific, your bitter, broken girlfriend, Teach. all right, who is jaded about love. So yeah. when you tell her, I feel this way about, no, girl, you tripping. <laughs> no, this, this can't be real. He going to set you up. That man is going to mess you up, right? <laughs> and scare you out of embracing what's in front of you. Because <laughs> you went to her rather than went to God. I'm going to keep bringing it back up. You, you yeah. got to go to God. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> we share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman of God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you're selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth, and it means people. It means men, it means resources, and it means means. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, y'all been really loving these episodes in season six. And y'all been hitting me up like crazy. Ever since season one, for five seasons, y'all been hitting me up telling me, why don't you get this brother, get this brother, get this brother? Well, the Lord saw fit <laughs> for me to be able to sit down with this king and we're going to chop it up. We're going to have, y'all love it when I talk to brothers because we talk real and that's what this episode is going to be. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, the person y'all been begging me to have, Stefan Labossier. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, Did, did I say your last name right? You, you did pretty well. Labossier. Yeah. Labossier. <laughs> it's French, right? Yeah, it's French. Um, where are you from? Uh, parents, Haitian. I was born in New York, raised in Miami. Okay, so you've been around. You've been around, huh? I guess you could call it that. <laughs> so so what city did you like living in the most? Miami. Miami? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because I'm in Atlanta now, Miami. The weather, the different cultures, you know, the Caribbean culture down yeah. there. It's just, and, and you know, it's just a different type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? So I just, you know, it's what raised me. So I'm, I'm, I'm accustomed to it. Uh, we were talking uh, a few minutes ago about what should we call this episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did you come up with? The harsh truth about dating today. Why? Because there's a lot of truths we need to discuss. <laughs> and there's a, lot, there's a lot of things going on with people and dating. And there's so many misconceptions that I think people are shooting themselves in the foot. They are? Yeah, absolutely. And they're not getting the real story of what's going on. There's a lot of incomplete information being passed around. And I'm not talking about just like on the internet. I'm saying from their girlfriends, from their mothers, from their brothers, they're yeah. telling you half the story of what happened in that relationship. And it it develops this perception that's not really based on reality. Because if you heard the whole story, you, you, think you would see exactly. Yeah. I was talking to somebody and I'm glad you pointed that out because uh, I was talking to somebody and they were saying, well, my mom taught me this, this, this. I said, but did she tell you what that did when she operated like mm -hmm, that? Did mm -hmm. you see her have a healthy relationship having come from that? You you may saw her as this strong black mother, but 
you would never have experienced her as a lover. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So you're getting a skewed viewpoint. Like, my mom was a strong black woman. Yeah, you saw her as a mother. But why couldn't she keep a man? Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you start thinking about that, uh, let's back up. Um, how long have you been single as far as unmarried? I'm just going to say a long time. A long time. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever get married again? Absolutely. Okay, so you find, you find value in marriage. Yes, I, I believe... I believe most of the people should get married. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll say this. I believe if you want children, you should get married. Um, I believe if you're trying to even build wealth together, marriage is a great tool for that. I think the people who have the greatest argument against marriage are extremely people who are already very wealthy yep. or people who don't want kids. You know what I'm saying? So to me, because I'm still open to the idea of kids, that's why. I think also for me, Marriage is about stability as yes. well. And so having that one person that I can rely on, connect with, build with, uh, and create substance with, because a lot of these casual situations don't create substance. So Facts. to me, there's just a deeper bonding that can occur through marriage. So that's why I would still be all for it. Still all for it. Now, with being, well, with you being in the space that you're in, is it extremely challenging uh, to to link up and build a future with somebody? Hell yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's the biggest, what's the, what's the harsh reality of that? Man, I, so I think people, like people don't understand just because you are knowledgeable yeah. does not equate to, one, finding the right person who fits into your life. Facts. And more specifically, finding that person that God wants you to accept into your life. There it is. And once you have God in the equation, it throws everything <laughs> off because you might swear you ready, right? And you're thinking, nah, man, this is it. It's going to be the yep. year. Yep. I done did everything I'm supposed to do. But for all you know, there's a few more things God wants you to set up before he can bring your partner. And so despite your ability to attract people yeah. and to have options, so to speak, it doesn't equate to God saying, it's time now. Yeah. And that's a battle that you have to face within because, again, when you do have great options, I meet wonderful women all the time. Yeah, of course. It, it's hard to, to convince yourself, don't take it, because <laughs> spiritually you're being told, nah, this isn't it yet. You know what I'm saying? And again, it ain't nothing wrong with a lot of the women I'm meeting. And, and of course, there are women out there who got issues. But right. Ultimately, the God, the God aspect of it, you know, makes it much more difficult. And it and it also creates an, an environment where people may not understand. So when I when I say to someone, well, God has not said this is it, it sounds like to a lot of people Rejection. you're making excuses. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or you're just rejecting or you're, you're scapegoating in God. And it's like, nah, if you've been through what I've been through. <laughs> You would know, like, I can't ignore the spiritual voice. I have to listen to it. What do you mean, been through what you've been through? Man, I've been through so many spiritual occurrences. I've been through so many instances where God told me to do something. I'll give you one quick story real Good. quick. When I was starting off doing this, I had a Twitter. I had 90,000 followers on Twitter. When you started out, you had 90,000? No, I mean, I'm I built up. No, <laughs> Jesus. But I didn't have like a Facebook following yet. Instagram was wasn't out yet. This was all Twitter. So I wanted 100,000 followers so bad. <laughs> and mind you, I like I'm still, I got one book out. Or did I even have a book yet? Either way, I'm I haven't gotten out there. Like people don't know me as a speaker. I'm not, I haven't, my brand doesn't have much awareness yet. Other than the Twitter. Well, you're talking about 90,000. That's a lot of awareness. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, not to the point where I'm getting booked yet. Okay, I see what okay? you're saying. So um, I want these 100,000 followers. So this is when these companies came out to sell followers. Oh, so yeah, I yeah. was like, man, I should do this. So I pray about everything. <laughs> now, mind you, I'm broke during this time. We're going to buy some but, followers. But I prayed, and God <laughs> said, buy the followers. Right? <laughs> so... So I'm like, all right, I'm going to take these $40. I'm going to buy these followers. I bought the followers. And and the and the site made it seem like these going to be real people. Yeah. Two hours later, followers are coming in. All fake. All right? Fake profiles. I'm pissed off. I go on my bed. I'm depressed now. I'm like, I'm crazy. I don't hear God. What am I talking about? This was so stupid. I don't waste $40. Right? Another hour later, and I that, go down. Uh, but let's go back. That forty dollars hit a whole lot different. Oh, when you ain't it, got it no sure money, did. <laughs> <laughs> it sure did. I'm trying to tell you. So uh, an hour later, I go downstairs. I had a computer in the, my office in the basement. I go to the basement. I jump on Twitter. Why I get a tweet from a dude saying, "Congratulations, I'm your hundred thousand follower." 
I got a relationship panel in Atlanta I want yeah. you to speak on. Come on, man. Exactly. Come on, man. Exactly. Like, you can't explain Come that on, other than man. to say God. Come like, on, man. Even when it looked like I made a huge mistake and I was just listening to myself, you can't, like, I can't script that. <laughs> no, I can't you script can't. that any better. You can't. And that panel led to me connecting with more people, led to more opportunities. Like, <laughs> so when you, and again, I'm giving you one small story. Yeah. I got hundreds, thousands of stories, bro. So when you've been through stuff like that and you really see you heard something accurate, yes. you can't just turn around now and say, nah, let me ignore this. Let me not listen in, in the situation. And what I found is we have a tendency as believers where we'll listen to God in certain areas, but yep. we'll ignore him when it comes to relationships. Because that's the thing that's closest to our heart. And that's the mm -hmm. thing that we desire most, which is the biggest decision we'll ever make is who we decide to get married to. And it's the thing that we have the least amount of control of, especially when it comes to uh, women have the least control over a man proposing to them. So yeah, now you see yeah. women, you know, jump, putting the cart before the horse and they're proposing to men. <laughs> so what do you think about that? Oh, I do not like it. I do not like it at all. I disagree with it. Now, let me say this. There's always exceptions to the rule. I have seen some situations like there was one client I had. Uh, the man proposed to her. She declined because family did not want her to marry him. It was due to cultural differences. Okay. And then something happened. She had a revelation, and then she realized, you know what? This is the man of my dreams. I'm gonna. And then she proposed to him. To me, that makes sense. He had already done it. But in most cases, what you'll find is that when the woman proposes, it's because deep inside she know this man ain't gonna do it. <laughs> exactly. Or she, and she's trying to secure her position. And then God forbid they do it in front of an audience, <laughs> all right? So that you now you knew he wasn't gonna do it on his own. <laughs> now you put him in front of people so that it makes it harder for him to, to say, say no, no. <laughs> all right? And I've had men tell me who are married the only reason why they're married because they were too afraid to say no. God, so whether no. it was a direct proposal, or it was one of those ultimatums, yeah. marry me now or I'm out, stuff like that, and they didn't know how to handle it. Now, of course, men should not be so weak in that area that they Did can't they, stand yeah. on their truth and, and say what it is. But I always say men struggle with rejecting women because we're not accustomed to being in that position. Facts. So you will have it's a more likely chance that he will say yes, even though he doesn't want yeah, it, yeah. compared to a woman who's more accustomed to rejection. So it's easier for her to say no if she doesn't want it. Whew. I'm trying to see with the example that you used a minute ago, do I still agree with that? Because <laughs> I'm like, I, I would say that she should say to him, I'm ready now. And then let him do what he does. Because I, I just don't know, as a man, I would be acceptable of a woman proposing to me. Well, I just think that just throws off my whole dynamic. And and I agree with you in that sense. Like, I, I wouldn't want a woman proposing to me. I would want her to allow me to yeah. do it. But again, I think I, I can give with you that know, because of what what, what exactly. their unique what situation is. He and if clearly that wanted him, it, and if that worked for him, then that works for them. Yeah. Like whatever works for couples is what works for them. But to it. your point, I do think that that's something else that women have to realize: the man who truly wants to marry you. He wants to be the one yeah. to propose. He's not looking for you to propose to him. So whenever you hear these dudes say, well, why can't women propose to men? God. That's a dude who's like, you like this girl, but you're not really into her like that. And you just don't want the responsibility of getting the ring and yeah. doing this. Like, But if you were really in love with her, yeah, you not. would have no problem if you believe in marriage. We've seen it in cartoons growing up. You know, you see Pepe Le Pew, he's going to chase. <laughs> we watch uh, Family Matters. We saw Steve Urkel chase mm -hmm. Laura down, you know, and he would always say, I'm wearing you down. I'm wearing you down. So at the end of the day, I don't know where we've... Uh, We've we've created these men nowadays that are just afraid to step up and go after what they want. Yeah, times because, are changing. Because that just don't make sense. I just I can't wrap my brain around that to to see that. And it breaks my heart when I see a woman on social media doing that. And this one video, I don't know if it was staged or whether it was true, but the woman proposed to this dude and, she, and her family was all around. He rejected her and her dad got mad at, at the dude and was roughing up the dude. How are you going to reject my daughter? And all that? I said, sir, <laughs> You got to reverse engineer this thing. If you mad at the dude for turning down your daughter, you need to be something. You 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 dropped the ball somewhere because your daughter felt the need to go ahead and propose this dude. Exactly. That's the bigger issue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. So when you look at um, when you look at God being Lord over your life and 
submit to the voice of God with who he chooses for you to marry. Have you ever gotten, have you ever felt like you heard God uh, tell you a specific person was your wife or your, uh, or whatever, and you pursued her and it didn't work out the way you thought? So I, yeah, yeah. But I look back and I, and I said it with hesitation simply because I feel like, was I really hearing God at that time or was I attaching to what I wanted to see? And it happened a long time ago. So I need to like sit down and process how did I get to that conclusion? Because now when I look back, I don't view it as I had a deep connection with that woman. I view it as I had an attachment to her. And once hold I on, under- hold on, hold on, what's the difference? <laughs> we got to break now. What's the difference between a connection and an attachment? Okay, so a connection is one i believe connection is when our spirit recognizes yes. our match facts, all right facts. and in connection we can truly be ourselves with each other we 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 like each other at our core yes. all right and so who we present ourselves to be like and, and as we go deeper into each other it's not going to scare us away see a lot of people don't go deeper and expose themselves because they're afraid to push the person away but when there's a connection you can't scare them away no matter how deep you go, no matter how crazy it sounds, they are willing to embrace those things. That's good. Whereas attachment is very surface driven, all right? And it's usually and it can be based on various things. You can be attached because you're infatuated based off of looks. Yep. You can be attached because you spent so much time yep. on this person, they you don't want to let go you. of that. Yeah. Yes, they grew on you. You can be uh attached because like in this situation, it was a form of they became my best friend. Yeah. And so now thinking of them being gone kind of hit me in a way and that made me think, oh, this must mean this is it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So attachment can go in so many different directions, but it is very surface driven. And what you'll find in a lot of cases where men feel like they're in love with this woman, what they're, and, and this happens to women as well, they're in love with what they believe her potential really is. So it's almost like you have this woman and she could be... Uh, very hurt from her past. So she maybe she's guarded in certain ways. She has moments where she acts out, but she has her moments where she's super sweet, loving, whatever. Yeah. And you hold on to those moments of super sweet loving, but you ignore the reality of that she's most of the time guarded, struggles to be maybe affectionate, struggles to do this, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So now you, you saying I'm in love with her is based off my belief that if she could just be this... <laughs> Regularly, if we could just get rid of this issue, we'd be good. But what you don't realize is when when she heals and, and when you heal, because if you're holding on to that, if you are in an unhealthy attachment, chances are there's some things you haven't healed from. Facts. You may realize this ain't going to work. You may realize that at your healthiest and at her healthiest, y'all don't fit together. But you can't see that because you're blinded by whatever issues you're holding on to. And again, you're holding on to the the nice image of them, not the full reality of them. You shared my Healing from Heartbreak episode. Did you get a chance to watch any of it? I did not get a chance to watch it. Man, because you, yeah, because that would be interesting to unpack with that because, yeah. All right, so we we're gonna let that go. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can bring some well, angles up right now. Well, we no, it, well, 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 just in it, it was a situation of where she told me after two months of dating and preparing for, um, we were in the stage of I was going through, we were going through pre premarital counseling, mm-hmm. and uh, I said I want to go to counseling before I propose to you, and because um, if we, I ain't about to go make this huge investment in the ring and do this public proposal and then later on she says oh well no I just said that because it was a lot of pressure and so um, I want to unpack some stuff early so after about two months some triggers started arising where she was like she started feeling like uh, she needed healing from a lot of stuff from her past because in in therapy we started talking about a whole lot of stuff and um, she told me she was like listen I just I just don't feel like I'm the right one I don't feel like just just all of that and it was just abrupt and I was like, what in the world just happened? Like, it just threw me all the way off. And um, and so in that episode, it was in real time. She said that on December the 27th. I recorded that video on December the 31st. I mm. released it on January the 4th. So people are seeing me uh, unpack this in front of an audience like 
and and I was I was holding it together for a little bit, <laughs> and then at, towards the middle, because I was like, man, I said, God, I don't want to, I don't want to transform into an F boy, mm-hmm. like because the, the, these streets are calling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I was like, man, like I got a whole lot of followers I could go through. So I was like, God, please, please don't let me go there. So I just kept trying to keep myself sane, but mm-hmm. I'm talking this out in front of the audience. Yeah, yeah, I said, yeah. Lord, please don't let me be an F boy. Please don't let me go to coast to coast, smashing these chicks from <laughs> Brazil to New York to. Toronto, like, Lord, please. I'm saying this in front of the audience. And then I began to pray and talk to God, and I was like, nah, I've come too far. And I just started crying in the episode. Mm. Um, And in real time, now that was the most vulnerable episode I had ever recorded, and it made me so scared. After I recorded, I got up and just left. It was on New Year's Day, I just left. I was like, this, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing with this. Uh, But then, she hit me up the day after and was like, you know, we were talking, and, and, uh, through text. He said, what you do for New Year's? And I said, I recorded an episode called Healing for Heartbreak. And I told our story. And she said, uh, do you mind if I watch it? Well, here I am in this vulnerable state to say, if I let her watch it and she says anything negative about it, then it's going to give me apprehension of re- releasing it. And uh, and then I know if I want to expose myself again to her mm-hmm. after it didn't go right. And uh, But to my surprise, she watched it and she was just like, this is what I love most about you is your ability to be vulnerable in ways that I've never seen a man be vulnerable. Mm. Uh, and so in that same sense that she always had done was affirm me in, in those moments of vulnerability. And so, um, a lot of that episode reverberated across the world where men started DMing me like, King, I ain't, man, I, who, you know, I was at a church, Jerry flowers church in Houston. A dude walked up to me and was like, say, man, he just kept doing this man right here. He said, I've been there before. Mm-hmm. I, I've, 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 I've been through heartbreak before. And man, I, I thank you for, you know, representing us. He said, I could never do what you just did <laughs> ever in my life. But uh, thank you. A lot of women were like, I've never seen a man be emotional before. Has a woman ever seen you be emotional as far as hurt, heartbroken or anything? Have you ever been that vulnerable with a woman? Yeah. Um, but they're typically with a friend, like a woman who's a friend. So there's nothing uh, romantic going on with that individual. Well, what was the difference? Why, 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 how could you be with a female friend but not a love interest? <laughs> well, I just think that there, there wasn't any moments with the love interest where it required me. Be, not vulnerable in the sense of something that brings me to tears or anything yeah. like that. Now, I'm always vulnerable in the sense of being very open and expressive about how I feel, what I'm thinking, things like that. So I have had women you know, compliment me or, or bring that up as they brought up to yeah. you. Like, wow, like I've never met a man who, who speaks so freely and openly and yeah. things like that. But yeah, as far as tears coming out that that didn't happen that just it just didn't happen that way you know <laughs> but you was like that with a with a homegirl yeah that's interesting that's cool um so as you when, when you look at this this we call it these dating streets mm-hmm. what are some of the things that you see are some of the biggest struggles uh that people are dealing with in these dating streets so here's the thing that, that pops in my head first um i just feel like people need to get out their own way that's good and and part two to that is stop letting the internet trick you. The internet is not real life. And, and we're not even just saying it from the perspective of, because, you know, people always talk about yeah. uh, people showing the highlights yeah. of their relationship yeah. and not falling for that. So, of course, that's one piece of it. But I think we're developing these perceptions of men and women based off of small minorities who are the loudest on the internet. And it doesn't really give the full picture. So, like, one thing that pops to mind now is, you know, a lot of people on the internet, is, it makes it seem like every woman wants a six-figure man. Yes. All right? Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I'm sure every woman ideally would love to have a guy who's making that much money. Yeah. Right? However, the majority of relationships involve women that are with men who don't make six figures. Facts. So to make it seem like <laughs> you can't get a woman, a decent, good woman, without six figures, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But, but you have to understand it. If I bring you on a show and I ask you, people answer in an idealistic manner. <laughs> They're going to say, yeah, what the top of the line thing they want. It's like you bring someone on a show, you say what kind of car you want. They might say a Lexus, a Bentley. But yeah. they ain't got Lexus money uh, or they, they they're going to be happier in their Nissan Maxima or whatever. Exactly. So it, you, we have to understand how life actually plays out 
versus what people proclaim and state aren't the same things. Especially when we look at the percentage of six-figure earners. Uh, what is it? Is it like 5% or two? They, So I think I, I, I've seen the numbers change. One, at one point, I saw 10%. I recently saw 15%. But I don't know if that was households, yeah. not individuals. Yes. All right? Yeah. And then so if you, but I'll say this, if you break it down to men, it's probably less than 10%. Yeah, yeah, because I remember uh, the popular guy on the internet uh, who, you know, God rest his soul, he would say something like, Two percent, three percent, or something. It was like real low for black men. Yeah, yeah. If he's yeah. if he's dwindling yeah. it down to black men, it yeah. probably is. Yeah, exactly. He was saying like two or two or three percent or whatnot. Yeah. And so, and what he did was, which I can agree with him on, is the reality of if all these women are fighting after a three percent, like mm -hmm. we already know that men uh, outnumber women seven to one, and then they you do go, not. We do not outnumber. <laughs> No, no, I mean, women, I mean women, I mean women, I mean women, women. What is the percentage of men to women? Listen, in, in the world. I'm talking about United States. United States, I believe it's like 1.2 to 1. It is not this ridiculous, outlandish number that we repeat. I remember like, you know, I live in Atlanta. They oh, used to, they, say, they said 17 to 1 in yeah, Atlanta. Exactly, 20 to 1, all this stuff. It's like, no. So I went myself on the Census Bureau data to look it up. And it was nowhere near that. What was it? It was again. It was like one point in Atlanta. Yeah. The thing is, what what happens is, and I, and I'll use Atlanta as an example. Yeah. Men and women don't go out to the same places, so it makes it look like there are no men. So, for example, when <laughs> I first moved to Atlanta, they had this event called Atlanta Play Date. Right, they used oh, to yeah, this yeah. thing they used to yeah. do. Yeah. I go out there, and I ain't gonna lie. It was like ten to one yeah, when yeah. I went there. Yeah. Okay. Women everywhere, barely yeah. any men. Two weeks later, I went to a club. <laughs> it was a sausage fest in that thing. It was brothers everywhere. Where the women at? All right. And I, the, the light bulb went off. I was like, well, wait a minute. It's like the men are going one place and the women, and going, the women going somewhere else. When there's a festival, oh uh, yeah, women show up. Yeah. You don't see as much men. And, and typically, men in general don't go out as much as women. If you talk to married women, what is the, one of the biggest complaints they give? That the men don't want to go out no more. Yeah. They don't want to take them. It is Men are very comfortable staying home. They just want something to watch, some food on their plate, <laughs> and that's some it. sex. You know, And they're yeah, good. They're, they're not good. trying to be all over the place. So, again... It's not that the men aren't there. It's that, yeah, it's just we're not outside in the same places. <laughs> so the numbers are not no 7 to 1. They ain't no 17 to 1. There ain't none of that. And then people going to come in there, well, you know, you got to account for jail. And <laughs> yeah. You got to account for sexuality. It's like, well, damn, there's women in jail, too. There's women's sexuality, too. So those numbers get knocked down. The, and then the, the last resort to make it seem like the numbers are far off is to say, well, there's only... Uh, Let's say one good man <laughs> to seven good women. Like every woman out there is a good woman. Are, are y'all serious? Like, yo, if if we use the same <laughs> metrics on both oh, sides, God. there ain't that many. <laughs> and, and I can say this as a relationship coach. If we're looking at it from the standpoint of people who are truly ready, healthy to be in a relationship. Yeah. The numbers ain't, it might be one to one out there. Like, it's not some far off odds. It's just, there's a lot of, and that's what we were talking about earlier misperceptions <laughs> and fake information being given that needs to be addressed. What a, so, that's crazy how that has become my reality when I say so. <laughs> exactly. But I'm gonna tell you what's so crazy about it. I'm gonna tell you how jacked up I am. I pulled that up last year and I saw the numbers, what you just said, and I was like, these can't be right. So I went back, so I went back to I, cause I want to see the 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 male birth versus female birth mm. and all that. I went all the way that. And then I said, This cannot be right. Because this it was like 1.5 or 1.2. It was like a real, I was exactly. like, it can't be that. So I said, no, nah, I'm going to go back to 1 to 7. <laughs> <laughs> and then I pulled up the world, and it was the same thing. And I was just like, yes. something can't be right. And I said, nah, the 1 to 7 is something better. I'm telling you, it's pretty <laughs> consistent across the board. No matter what city you in, it's pretty consistent. Because like I said, in the, in the, in the spaces, you know, if I'm at church, you're not going to see that. Exactly. And That's so what I'm, I'm saying. going, where the men at? So it looks looks like it when we're out and about but that's not the actual case i guess if i hung out at strip clubs i'll see more men <laughs> <laughs> i'm like they're all the men 
and there y'all go right here. And the ladies and the men. Here we go. We you all bounced saying? out. But yeah, so that's the difference. And so that's a good, that's a good, I'm glad that you uh, uh, checked me on that one. Because <laughs> it made me go back to LaTerris, you ran something totally different. But I said, but clearly that may be outdated or something. Oh, yeah, no, it's And then accurate. when you think about the census, a lot of people ain't really, you know, black folks, they be afraid to even go and answer those senses a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that throws that off too. <laughs> yeah, they be like, I ain't finna answer. I'm, I don't know. They try and track me. And um, all right, so when you look at another misconception or the harsh reality of of dating, what is that? When you start talking about the, and it's good, the first point you talked about is how unrealistic social media is, where we look at this. What about when you think of stuff like um, when women say they see Sierra get a husband and they start saying, <laughs> I want Sierra's prayer? You know, what do you think? So, about? you know, okay. And I, and I mean, let me make sure I say this is not about Sierra and Russell right, right now. But whenever women say to me, like, I, I've come across so, thousand situations where they'll be like, you know, I'm frustrated because, well, my friend over here, she got married or my sister got married. And my first question to them is, would you have married that same man? I always man? say that. I say that all the time. Look <laughs> at him. Look at him. Would you have married that say, man? No disrespect, but let's be real. Nine times out of ten, they're like, say no. no. <laughs> exactly. I say that all the time. So it's like, you you can have that too if, if, if you want to make some adjustments to your taste, right? But in reality, you would not be happy with that. And don't get so caught up being envious of other individuals because you don't know the price they paid to get it or Teach. the price they're paying to, to keep, keep it. it. All right? talk about it. So we get caught up in these, again, people showing off their relationships or these perceptions that it looks good on the outside. And yeah, I mean, you, you got to understand that even if it is an amazing relationship, even if that yeah. is the type of man you would want, want to marry, them. the question should be, what does she do to position herself to receive that? You know what I'm saying? And what can you now do and implement in your life to receive it? Plain and simple, if I see a man who's become a multimillionaire, is it is it any point to me sit there and complain about why he gets to be a millionaire and not me? No. I need to figure out, okay, what work did this man put in? Yeah. What can I learn from this situation? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just think that people and, and women have to be mindful of that and focus more on all right and i think everyone has to understand listen when you're not getting the results you want in life there's things you need to start doing differently yeah and i know that's a tough pill to swallow for some people because they immediately view it as you're saying something's wrong with them yeah and respectfully yes there is but again it's there's nothing wrong with something being wrong this is life. We we have to grow. We have to evolve. We have to be willing to accept correction. You know, there, there, I, I remember one time when I was going through that same situation with the what I thought was a connection, but it was right. an unhealthy attachment. I had another homegirl, and I was complaining. I can't remember what I was complaining specifically about, but she said in that moment, she said, well, maybe this is all happening because you don't know yourself yet. And I said, well, how dare you? <laughs> like, what? I don't know myself. I'm great. What are you talking about? Ain't nothing wrong with me. It's these women, right? <laughs> Facts. So, Facts. She's like, I'm just telling you. But I'm, I'm, I may have a moment like that, but I'm humble enough to sit back and say, wait a minute. If she said that, maybe there's a reason. Yeah. So literally that night I prayed and I said, God, is there... Do I is there something I'm missing? Yeah. Is there something that I'm not realizing about myself? If there is some growth that I'm missing. Yeah. And I ain't gonna lie to you. After that prayer, the evolution that occurred over the next few months after that was like, well, damn, <laughs> she was right. <laughs> she was right. I did not have and so it, it it highlights the fact that we tend to want to think we're good, we're good, we're good, yeah. we're not good. Yeah. And if we're not getting what we what we feel we should be getting then look deeper from within. I like At it. At the very least, go into prayer and ask God, what am I overlooking? What could I be doing different? And be willing to accept whatever that answer is. I like that because we're all on a continuum. We're all always ever becoming, as mm -hmm. Michelle Obama said, or ever evolving. At the end of the day, if we feel like we have arrived, then we might as well die at that point because exactly. there's no growth. 
Um, wow, that's 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 powerful. And so when you look at and it, you hit the nail on the head, it's the exact same thing I say to my friends. Now I will say that to them, they'll be like, "No, nah, I wouldn't marry him." I was like, "So how you envious of something you don't want?" Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. But again, because they look at the other person's choice as some personal attack against what they don't have, and I'm going, and I and I always say, "How many guys have you rejected? How many guys have you not re returned their call or ghosted or whatnot? Go call one of them and marry you. I probably, I promise you, they'll marry you." And let me tell you the, the 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 what happens a lot of times is again overlooking the very specific things that are creating obstacles as to why they cannot be with someone who's best for them so people will just say to you oh it's hard out here i can't find nobody boom 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 what they didn't tell you is that Anytime someone gets too close, they run. What they didn't tell you that is that they're so afraid to be like their mother that they try to overcompensate and be extra hard and extra masculine and end up becoming too difficult to deal with. Yeah. What they don't tell you is how hell, I had one situation where the person told me straight up when they like someone and they introduce them to their mother and the mother now approves, they no longer like the person. <laughs> They now lose attraction to that individual. Why? What, what, what is that We about? didn't get to get deeper into it because it was not like a client situation. It wasn't passing. But it just shows you how, again, <laughs> we are not getting the full story of why people are struggling. And many times it's due to deeper unresolved issues that Facts. people are unwilling to face. He said when the mama like him, she said, I don't want It's a wrap. Done. <laughs> I do not respect my mama's opinion. So if my mama like him, got to be the wrong person. Yeah, and I'm telling you. And so, like, if I had more time with them, the first thing I'd be like, we got to explore this. <laughs> yeah. What's the issue here? Forget, forget meeting men right now. This is your biggest problem. Yeah. And I guarantee you, once we address that, we start to uncover other little things that mm -hmm. haven't been talked about yet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So pe people don't want to accept how their past issues are affecting their present situation. That's good. And until they do, and then they're willing to do something about it, they're going to continue to struggle. So what you're saying pretty much is that it's, it's, the struggle isn't so much, when they say the struggle is real, it's not so much as vi finding viable candidates. It's the fact that we need to recondition and restructure what we think is a viable candidate. I, it's a mixture of that. So I think... To understand who is a viable candidate, you must understand yourself and be in tune with self, all right? So it's like if you don't know who you are, you don't know who fits with you. If you don't know what path you're headed in life, you don't know who belongs on that path with you. Facts. So you've got to do a lot of self-discovery. A lot of people have uh, suppressed their true selves for various reasons. That's good. They're fighting against what they really are, who they really are in various aspects of their life. So now how can you find the right fit? So I'll give you an example. And again, this is not an attack on women who are successful because I've, I've spoken about this before and people take it that way. So yeah. I don't want them to assume that. Yeah. But let's say you're a woman and deep inside your heart, what you really want is to be a homemaker, to be taking care of I've your talk, kids. I've, talk, I've talked to boss women who said that. Yes. I've talked but to But what women. happened is you got caught up in maybe it was your parents pushing you. You got to you have your own career. You do yep. this or whatever. Whatever the reason is. Yep. So now you become a doctor, let's say. Yeah. All right? Your heart's at home, but you become a doctor. Yeah. Well, now you're trying to find a man who fits your doctor life, not your home life. Teach. You see what I'm saying? Teach. And so now you're finding a man who doesn't speak to your true heart Teach. because you're already off your path and to begin with. Teach. You see what I'm saying? So you've got to correct that first. Now, yes, it's hard. It's hard to build our lives based off our, our understanding and then switch to God's understanding. And that might mean tearing the whole thing down. And rebuilding it. Exactly. So if you're that doctor to now have to step away and let go of the lifestyle you've been living Preach. And, and all you've accomplished. That's very difficult. So I understand and I sympathize, but you will never find yourself as happy as you could be yeah. and in proper alignment and being able to receive the man who fits that until you make that correction first. And that's where you're going to have to go to God. You're going to have to let him lead you out of that because it's tough, but it has to be done. We're going to just let that just simmer for a bit. <laughs> Bro, when I tell you, boy, let me tell you something. We're going to just let that simmer real quick. Because when I tell you I've spoken to uh, my female friends that some of them are millionaires and that's the biggest struggle and I see it in them and then I hear them, 
I call it like a little hiccup in a conversation where they'll be like, oh, I just can't wait to relax one day. I just can't wait to just just be at home. I said, hold on, you'll be a you you'll just be a a housekeeper. I, mean, when I, 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 I said, you'll be a homemaker. You'll be a a, a stay at home wife. They was like, yes, and I was like. You like because it'd be so polar opposite of what they're already doing. And let me let me interject real quick. Do you realize that's one of the big reasons why women who are very successful want a man who's making more than them? Because what they're thinking in their mind is <laughs> yeah. for many of them, yeah, they want to eventually be able to transition out of this job, yeah, but they don't want to let go of the lifestyle. There it is. So they need a man who makes enough. <laughs> To supplement their lifestyle and of course his. Yeah. And that usually means if I've been living off of 200 grand a year, yeah. well, I'm gonna need you to have 300 because I need 200 for me. <laughs> and you keep the rest of yourself. <laughs> That's how we're gonna make this work. Gonna make this it's work. gonna be hard to accept you making less because that means I'm gonna have to sacrifice yeah. maybe the spa day or maybe yeah. the trip. And that's why it can get difficult. And that's why, like, some people say, why you gotta have a man making more? A lot of times, that's the logic that's being processed. What have you found? Have you ever did coaching for or saw that dynamic where a man, I'm just going to ask you this. Do you normally see, because I have my ideology around this, do you normally see high-earning men wanting high-earning women? No. Exactly. No. It just don't. I mean, there's 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 gonna be always some exceptions to the rule, but, but that but normally you don't. Yeah, see it. normally no. The men men who are making money just do not care because again, from a logical perspective, yeah. it, what people have to understand is once you make a certain kind of money, going past that doesn't change your every day to day lifestyle. <laughs> it don't. So if you're a man and let's just say you're making two hundred and fifty grand, yeah, and in that two fifty grand. Your house is taken care of. You got investments. You got everything yeah. set up. Her making another two fifty <laughs> doesn't change nothing for you day to day. It, oh, okay, I can buy an extra house. I can buy an extra. Yeah, but you don't care at that point. You good. Yeah. So you don't need her to have that. Nuh-uh. It's just not as important anymore. Yeah. And then they go choose. They go choose the baddie. They go with men like that. They gonna choose by sight. They gonna say, I got this money. I got this. I'm gonna choose the finest woman I can meet. Um, I definitely think it's made things a little more difficult. So I'm a firm believer that... So it's funny. You can see someone online, right? And they don't do it for you. Meet them in person and you find yourself more attracted to them. Facts. All right? Been there. So I think that, one, we don't consider the energy that, that occurs in real life that can add to the attraction. Facts. Um, also, let's face it, some people don't look like the way they look online. Facts. And that can go either way. Yep. They can look better offline yep. or they can look worse offline. Yeah. So to me, I, this is where it goes back to my earlier statement, stop letting the internet <laughs> trick you and fool you. Like, get out and meet some people. Now, and even though I, I advocate for online dating, yeah, that's for the purpose of meeting them. But get offline as quickly as possible. Let's meet in person. Like, I'm a firm believer in dating. I don't even want to talk on the phone too much until we meet. Because that meeting in person is where it really happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we got to remember, before all the inventions of all that's this. How, that's how we met. Yeah, it was only in person. <laughs> all right? Not the phone. We had no phone. We had nothing. nothing. Not no FaceTime. It was in person. So let's get to that quickly and evaluate do we want to move forward or not. Shoot, Adam, Adam didn't meet Eve on FaceTime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Send her an email. You're going to be in the garden tonight. <laughs> Text no, I can't believe you ate that fruit. <laughs> I cannot believe you ate that fruit. And that's the reality, that human connection. And we felt it when we went through the pandemic, the lack of human connection and yeah. how it began to lead us into depression. A lot of people's like, wow, I didn't realize how important human connection was uh, when it was restricted from us. Yeah. Because that that in person, that, that energy that we get from each other, those hugs, those kisses, when people couldn't even hug their own mother or grandparents, mm-hmm. it was affecting them on high levels because God created created us for human connection. Absolutely. Um, what's something else that pops in your mind about the harsh reality of dating? What, 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 what is harsh? When we look at uh, people as they are aging, I, I meet a lot of women that are, you know, pushing 40 or well over 40 that have never been married and, a spot, you know, they desire to be married or they feel like they're aging out of the healthy range of having kids. Um, what would you say to women or men, period, that are hitting close to 35 or whatnot, and, and the women have to make these decisions. Um, 
And they feel like I have no control over being chosen. I have no, I don't want to be a baby mama. And um, so how do I restructure, refocus my mind in order to position myself uh, to allow men that I typically wouldn't allow a chance or, or, or the other, how, how would you position that woman? So, <clears throat> well, so as far as her allowing men who she typically wouldn't give a chance to, like, I, I'm not a big fan of telling people lower their standards. Is it lowering your standard? If you just say you, you you'll give somebody a chance that you wouldn't. Cause like you said, what if their brain has been so conditioned with all the stuff you just said, I, I want this. The society told me that this is what the internet has been proving to me. Uh, I want Sierra's prayer. I've been praying everybody else's prayer except the prayer of my own. And this ain't working. So I think if we're saying give them a chance. So if you're a woman who, let's say you see a man, you find him attractive, but his shoes don't look as good as you want them to. Yes. And typically you you wouldn't give that guy a chance. Right. Giving him a chance makes sense now because, of, because you at least still find him attractive. You right. were just being very nitpicky about yes. everything. But I, I'm very cautious about telling a woman who didn't find a certain type of man attractive is generally not attractive to that person, right. you know, or not attracted to that person. Now trying to force it with that individual, because again, there's a lot of women who get in relationships with guys they're not attracted to. That's not sustainable. You, you know say, what I'm saying? So you, you you've experienced that a lot of women that will say, "I got with a guy that I wasn't attracted to him to begin with." They don't even say it. Like I, one, I, I, I can see it. I can tell. And I, how do you tell that? And, and I'm not saying that because I'm evaluating the man's looks. I'm saying that I'm evaluating you're her energy the towards yeah, that the man. Connection towards exactly. And it, it, it's clear you're not that attracted to him, and that's the problem. So what ha what tends to happen in these relationships where women get with guys they're not truly attracted to is like, yes, you may be physically present in the relationship, <laughs> but you're not as affectionate towards him. Yeah. You don't show him the same. Respect respect that you show the guy that you really are attracted to. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot that you hold back and don't give to this That's man. Good. And now what happens is it's the relationship is being driven by that man's desire for her. Teach. Because to him it's like, well, man, I ain't never had a girl look this good. Teach. So he's fighting hard. God. He's doing everything. He's pouring into her, right? But here's the problem. Once they eventually get married, right? At some point, the man wants a return on his investment. Yes. And now that I've married you, so in his head, it's I'm doing all this to secure this woman to marry her. Now that I'm marrying her, I'm thinking, now I'm going to finally get the rewards of yes. all my work. Yes. And you know what she says to him? I'm tired today. The, the kids are, are doing something. I, I got to do this. Damn, you always want sex. What's wrong with you? <laughs> she coming up with all kinds of answers other than wanting to actually lay down what you want to actually actually show you that love and desire that you want. God. And then here's the other. We're going to keep going. Here's yeah. what happens now. And many women will get with this man thinking it's safe for her. Come Meaning on. he wants me more than I want him. Go there. I don't have to be super vulnerable here. I, I can trust that he's going to be loyal and faithful to me. But because you're not pouring back into him, Teach. the void is being created. Yep. All right. And what you've done by being a good looking woman who guess what this man you're not attracted to is you've made him more desirable to other women. So other you go women there. are looking and they're like, well, how did he get her? What's going on here? And you know what people think? You must either be packing, yeah, you got, got money, money, something yeah. is great about you. Yeah. So now those women start, he start getting attention he ain't never get before. All right? But he's getting it at a time that you are neglecting Teach. him of all the things that he always needed. Let's go there. And so now he ends up, and I'm not saying it's right, yeah. but he ends up taking it from somebody else. Yeah. And now the whole thing, blows, and now the woman thinks, damn, I can't trust no man. <laughs> men, all men are horrible, even even the ones who ain't attractive are horrible, right? <laughs> but no, that's not what the issue was. The issue was you got with a man you weren't really into, you were not willing to pour into, and whenever you create that void, you open the door to issues of infidelity. Stefan, you stepped on about a, a million toes. <laughs> I just see toes falling off across the world, just toes just falling off. Just toes. Man, let me tell you something. When I say you broke that thing all the way down and nobody can argue with the truth. Mm -hmm. And in the reverse, if it's a female dealing with a man the same way, he's not attracted, it's open up the same doors. It's that where we find ourselves lacking in whatever area it is that we don't feel the reciprocation in, 
as human nature, we're going to try to fill that void somewhere. Yeah. And that's just what that is. Um, and, 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 oh, God, dog. Like, because I've, I've had conversations. The reason why this is hitting so heavily, I've had conversations with women or women that have DM me who are married who have uh, stepped out on their husbands. And and I'll be like, God, I mean, they just tell me all kinds of stuff. And I'll ask, because I'm like, you're going to open it up? I'm going to ask, wow, what happened? How long y'all been married? What made you first start stepping out? What what was this? And they'll share it, you know, and I'll be like, wow. You know what I'm saying? And if if I was a jaded individual, it would make me say, well, you can't trust nobody. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's the mistake people make. Yeah. They, they automatically think this is about just humans being humans. Uh, horrible people. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, of course, we're not saying cheating is not a bad thing. However, it's a result of being with the wrong person. Facts. It's a result of not pouring into the relationship what is necessary. Now, yeah. granted, you'll have some people say, well, you could do everything perfect and they're going to still cheat. Listen, as a coach, and I guarantee if we sat down with various therapists and coaches, the percentage of relationships where the person can honestly say, I was getting everything I wanted and needed, and I still cheated, is like this. Yeah, yeah. It is so small. You will almost always find something yeah. that's lacking. Now, yes, sometimes it's not the other person's fault because right. they were not aware, yeah. and, and that individual should be making you aware of the issue. But I cannot tell you how many people, like, people don't realize there are couples right now, some of the same couples, they're idolizing on the internet, right? They don't know that that couple hasn't had sex in two months. Yeah. All right? Yeah. That they've been going through all kinds yep. of issues. But it's crazy because even though they haven't had sex in however many months, when one or the other, because it happens both sides, all right, mm -hmm. when one or the other steps out, the other person who's been neglecting is shocked. And to me, it's like, yo, you that's ridiculous. You, you know, you yes. know it stopped. You, you saw I hit me our relationship. You cannot to this might piss some people off, but I'm just gonna keep it real. To me, the neglect is almost as bad as the cheating. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You don't get to wipe away the fact that you've been neglecting your partner this whole time because now the partner cheated. It reminds me of like in football, how one guy could slap the guy's uh, helmet, <laughs> then the other guy slaps back, and now the flag gets thrown. Right. <laughs> so they only saw the second slap, but you forgot the first slap that started the whole damn thing. So it's like, yo, you can't just blatantly neglect your partner. And I'm using the word blatantly, blatantly. because again, we're not talking about you had a rough yeah. moment. Yeah. You, you know, you're struggling with something. That's fine. We're talking about this has been going on consistently for a while. Yeah. And then you shocked that they end up doing something <laughs> like this? And then some people say, well, why can't they just leave? Let's be honest with ourselves. It ain't that simple not, depending not, not the on divorce. the dynamic of the relationship. Not, not just to go get divorced. And many times that person isn't cheating because they want to leave. They're hoping things can be fixed. You know what I'm saying? And, and again, I want to make clear, I'm not condoning cheating. I'm not, yeah, exactly. I'm not condoning it. But it, we got to be it, real it, about this conversation. Well, it takes people to have a, a a balanced mind to accept what you're saying. Because clearly you're not saying, oh, I condone cheating. If you're not getting your knees met, go cheat. Yeah. You're saying that this is the the effect of yes, it if it's not happens. handled in a healthy way. Yes. Yeah, you're not saying don't go to counseling. You're saying, hey, go talk to your partners. Express those needs that you have. Go through therapy. Start to try to uncover and excavate whatever that is that's preventing y'all from connecting on that level. But when you said blatantly, they're saying that, hey, I've been expressing my needs to you. I keep saying, hey, I need this. I need this. I need this. You looking at me like, take care of yourself. Yes. You and, know? And, and I feel the need to say that it's kind of hitting my spirit right now. That be happening sometimes. And, <laughs> and what I feel the need to say is I really want, and I'm, I'm going to gear this toward married couples. I really want married couples to understand one of the purposes of marriage is sex. Yes. And if you dispute that, please go to the Bible and read where he says, for the sake of not falling into sexual immorality, go get you a wife. Go have you a partner so you can have your sex with and have your needs met. Yeah. It's why it says do not deny your partner yep. of your body when they're requesting of it. If it wasn't that important, <laughs> he wouldn't have said all that. In all the right? Bible. Exactly. But then we can go further. Even if you're not a believer... I, I, the fact that, you know, the chemicals that are released through orgasm and everything yeah. bond people together. Yeah. To me, that says this mechanism was created to help people stick together. So good sex strengthens the relationship. Facts. Serotonin. But I also feel the need to say 
when I say good sex, because there might be some dudes saying, hell yeah, this is right, right? But good <laughs> sex ain't just the act of sex. No, it's, it's intimacy. affection as well. Yeah. Intimacy and affection. So making sure your woman is satisfied sexually and affectionately and intimately, and your man is satisfied in those ways. And that means learning what they, they like, need. Yep. not what you think should be acceptable. Yeah. What do they want? And if y'all have that conversation and y'all realize you guys are not willing to pour into each other's needs, then maybe you shouldn't be in that relationship. That was one of my aha moments I learned after my marriage. I call it the feather story. The people in my podcast hear me talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, before I got married, I was used to having uh, sex with women and it didn't take a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? It mm -hmm. wasn't foreplay was cool, but you know, it just, you know, it was just a whole lot easier. Then I get married, <laughs> then I get married to a woman who one day she brings a feather home in our first year of marriage. She's talking about use this feather. I'm like, what is this feather? Why are you always complicating stuff? Like a feather? What am I supposed to do with this feather? She's like, I just want you to rub it, just rub it on me. And I was just like, I'm rubbing all on her begrudgingly. You know what I'm saying? Just so selfish. I'm rubbing all on her begrudgingly. I'm like, this is just stupid. She always making stuff hard. This is just dumb. I don't know what this is doing for mm -hmm. her. This don't even make sense. And God brought that to my remembrance, like literally last year. I've been divorced going on seven years. Uh, about the, well, seven years of this past December. And uh, last year, God said, you remember when you were married and you, you complained about not having sex and your wife wasn't very sexual with you? Uh, but I want to bring back to your remembrance, this feather. And I was like, what about the feather? He was like, you were so selfish in that. Mm. And I said, yeah, cause she, cause who, who, I ain't never met a woman that wanted a feather. I ain't never met that. He was like, but you've never been married before either. Yeah. He said, all these other women were women that you slept with, but those women that you never ever married. The woman that, that you married had a natural need. She wanted you to be delicate with her. She wants you to take her time. She wants you to explore. It's not a it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. But you just said it's taking you so long. Let's go ahead and just get it yeah. at it. But you never fulfilled her needs. When I tell you I felt this big, I said, <laughs> God dog it. I said, oh Lord Jesus. He said, yeah. And that's why I want you to be very self aware that when you get married the next time it's not about you. Yeah. It's about her and every level of your relationship. Absolutely. And if each party makes it about the other person, you cannot fail. Exactly. And I think for men, because a lot of men go through that same struggle, yeah. not understanding the needs of that woman sexually and intimately. And they have to become, learn to enjoy the process of pleasuring her. Yes. Whatever that entails. It's not about under, it don't have to make sense to you. It may not, you may not care for feathers, you know, on <laughs> yeah. your body, right? But if it makes her feel good, take have joy. Have coming to the bedroom. Yeah, Whatever exactly. you need. <laughs> you know what feathers everywhere, And boy. take joy in that. And when you do, again, you, everyone's happy. Everyone's not going to get satisfied. Now, this, that to me, honestly, like I really feel like, it, and that's the reason why I feel like I needed to talk about it. If people could correct the sexual issues in their marriage right yeah. now, it would save and help so many relationships. I will. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just think we got it. And, and the problem is we don't have, I feel like we don't have enough conversation about it. Um, you know, people don't get deep enough. That it's too taboo for a lot of individuals. But it's like, listen, this thing is leading to a lot of brokenness in relationships. Now, again, let me also say, it didn't start just with the sex. Of course. The disconnect typically started before then. You right. know what I'm saying? So we will have to go deeper. So if you do struggle to even enjoy pleasuring your wife, well, what's the problem? Yeah, do you really the, even love her? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Same thing for that woman. If you don't enjoy pleasuring him, maybe the issue is you're not really into him like yeah. that. So yeah. why are you even with this person? Yeah. And if it's, well, he did X, Y, Z 10 years ago. Well, can we resolve <laughs> and, and release that? Because clearly you still hold on to it and it's blocking your ability to connect deeper with your man or your man with your, your wife. We just got to address all that stuff. Which is real. And then when you start unpacking when you said that after this start opens and, you know, if this is broken, then this right here starts opening up doors. And that's what led to me end up stepping outside of my marriage multiple times is because it was this brokenness and it started feeling like, well, dog, she only want to have sex with me. What well, is this, 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 mm -hmm. this. But her mind, she's like, well, I want to have sex with you because I want to make love to you and you just want to have sex. Yeah. And so in my brain, I'm just like, it's the same thing. You know what I'm <laughs> it's, the, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. But she's not saying in any of it. All it feels like is rejection to me. And then the other women that's giving me more attention, now I'm stepping out and entertaining them. And so when 
everything you said was so on point. This podcast is so much about me because I always say that this is my personal journey. And so the nuggets and the gems that I'm extracting uh, from this conversation is saying, now this is how you reverse engineer even infidelity. Yeah. Is to make sure the minute that you see it rear its ugly head, just from the moment of feeling rejected, then say, hey, listen, this is what I need from you. And, and if that person can't hear you, we need to go to therapy because I know the propensity that I have that I need, I, this is a natural need for me. And whatever you need in order to give me whatever I need, let me give you what you need. So we are reciprocating this thing. Absolutely. Um, in these dating streets, when you see people, do you ever feel like it's a, I've had couples come on that um, have gotten married in five months of knowing each other. I've had couples who have DM me and saying that they got married a month after meeting each other. Mm -hmm. Do you ever believe that it's a, such a thing as too soon? Based on time, not based on everything else that can happen within that time frame. I don't think it's too soon based off of the time. I, okay, is there a such thing as too soon? If you said a day later, I, I'm going to say too soon, right? Yeah. So <laughs> a well, week it, too soon. It's, it's a couple that DM me said they got married like two days late. Something crazy. I was so, like, I, but I'll say this. Though my reaction would be too soon. If you say to me, we both prayed about this. Yeah. You guys are spiritually in tune individuals and you feel certain, then I'm not going to argue against Facts. it. So I don't think we need to fight or, or look down on those who get married fast. I do think there is a reality that people think love takes time. And to me, that is wrong. Yes. Love, real love, real connection to me is like this. Yes. So it's not... It, it's it's not unreasonable for them to have felt so strongly that they yeah. feel like they could pull this trigger. The only reason why I would even consider too soon is because did you have enough time to do your due diligence? Yeah. So that doesn't mean it has to be a month. So basically, if we meet tomorrow and over the next two weeks, we are talking hours per day. We're diving yeah. deep. We're addressing all these things. You did as much work in those two weeks than some people do in six months to a year. Yeah, or two years. Exactly. Yeah. So to me, it's not about the time frame. It's the work that was put in to make sure we're on the same page. We want the same things. We've gone to God. We followed all the necessary steps. If you done that, I know a couple, they, they came up to one of my shows. They said they got married after three months. Mm -hmm. of, know, of knowing each other. And and what helped them was a video where I talked about, because there's this whole term of love bombing. Yes. All right? Yeah. And so the whole idea that this one person is typically talked about with men. Yeah. Men meet this woman and they shower her with love, trying to overwhelm her and yeah. then, you know, reel her in. But what I ex try to explain to women is that, listen, it's only a love bomb if it was one-sided. So if he did all that, but you didn't really necessarily feel that way to him, but you were just enjoying all the expression and the showering of love and what or attention, attention and all these things, then that's a love bomb. But if you met someone and you felt this intense thing from within, so essentially you felt what they felt, they're just more willing to act on it than you. There it is. Because you're more afraid and because you are... Giving into the construct of time. Well, it, it, this can't be real. This is too soon. Teach. Why am I feeling like this? Teach. You know what I'm saying? Teach. And that's what's throwing you off. Or you go into, I hate to say it, but this is true. You go into your girlfriend, and let me be more specific, your bitter, broken girlfriend, Teach. all right, who is jaded about love. So yeah. when you tell her, I feel this way about, no, girl, you tripping. <laughs> no, this, this can't be real. He going to set you up. That man is going to mess you up, right? <laughs> and scare you out of embracing what's in front of you. <laughs> Because you went to her rather than went to God. I'm going to keep bringing it back up. You, you yeah. got to go to God. Consult with God, not yeah. your friends. Nothing yeah. wrong with talking to your friends, family, pastor, whoever. But they are not God. Teach. Even people who read my book, I try to always say in my book, I am not God. I am giving you a message to go back to God with and to verify if this is for you or not. Teach. You know what I'm saying? He's the final decision maker in your life. So... You get all scared because you think it has to take a certain amount of time. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Because I'll, I'll add this. I'm a, I'm a firm believer because people love to say love is an action. No. Love is expressed yeah. through action. Yes. Love can be expressed through words, but love is spirit. That's why biblically it says he was given he has given us a spirit of love. The yeah. energy of love already exists Steph, in you. Steph, are you we are beings of love. And now it's who we're gonna give it to or not. 
And the reason why it's the, and, and the way that I look at in love or connection, again, is when that spirit knows this is who I'm in alignment with. This is where it's at. And because they say things happen in the spirit before they happen in the spirit, in the physical, the spirit already knew who that person is. It's just taking our brains a whole lot of time to catch up. And then this is where if you haven't healed, if you haven't developed your relationship with God, you're so disconnected from your own spirit that you can't get in tune with what it's telling you. So your mind is saying, no, this person ain't it. Or And here's what I always say. Uh, uh, and this is more specific. A, a person who has not healed from their past is more likely to find reasons to run from the wrong, from the right person and find a reason to run to the wrong person. All right. Now, I have to say is it happens more with women. They may not want to believe that, but I'm telling you in my position, I can tell you firmly because even many men who have not healed, the thing is when they meet that woman they feel like they have a connection with, it's easier for them to tell themselves she's different from the rest. So even though I'm scared, I'm willing to dive deep into this. The problem is because he has not learned how to manage his emotions and he hasn't healed, he fumbles the situation because he's now very unstable. You know, he overreacts to things. He, he just mishandles emotionally in a lot of ways. However, for the woman, when she experiences that connection and she hasn't healed, to her is, how do I know he's not like the rest? God, dog. How do I know he's Stephane, just not get out my business. Me. Get out my business. <laughs> get out my business. I done told you you ain't watched the episode, so stay out my business. You know and 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 you'll have women in her ears saying, "No, nah, don't. He 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 gonna do this. Oh, I've seen this before. No, you haven't seen this before. You saw a dude who had tons of red flags that you ignored. All right, and then it blew up in your face later. This woman is seeing someone that there's not a red flag." She's feeling something amazing. She's trying to look for a red flag because she needs something to validate her fear of moving forward with this man and being vulnerable. And what will she do? She will sabotage. She will push away that man. She will create a false narrative in her head in order to detach from the situation. And that's why I always say you cannot destroy a connection. You cannot create it. You can pile junk on top of it. You can run as far away from it, but the connection is still there. And that's why even that woman that runs, when she runs back into that man, comes right back. Is right there. Stefan? <laughs> I think there's an altar I need to go lay on. <laughs> you know, I, I can tell when people get, when they tap into the spirit, it's like I just saw you go into a spiritual download. Mm -hmm. I just saw the Holy Spirit just fall on you, mm -hmm. and you just started, you and you, you, you in your flow at this point. Uh, and then at this point, we got we to gotta go ahead and let it go. Because <laughs> other than that, then... Um, I don't think I'll be able to recover from this interview. Because <laughs> when I tell you, you hitting, the, oh, my God. It's not only is it apl uh, applicable to my own life, but people that I've seen who have dated. Uh, I had R.C. Blakes on here, and he was talking about he told his wife, listen, when they were dating, listen, I'm not, uh, I don't want to get married. Mm -hmm. And he walked away from it. She she started dating this guy. He said, here I am, a a, a big belly, broke pastor, and uh, he was young, and she went and married a, a, a baseball player that was a millionaire. He said he had abs, he was attractive, he was all this. He said he went and had a conversation with his mom. His mom was like, like a year and a half later. She said, where is Lisa? And he said, I don't talk to Lisa no more. And the mom was like, that's your wife. Mm. He was like, I don't want to hear this. And mom started telling him all the stuff. He got mad. Uh, he left. He was like, that's crazy. And then uh, he said, hey, I'm going to go talk to God. So he talked to God. God, is that my wife? He said, yeah. He said, oh, shoot, what do I need to do? She already dating somebody else. He said, I had to Married to somebody else at that point. No, they were dating. Oh, they were dating. Okay. They were dating. So he had to swallow his price. He said, man, I'm going to hit up. I'm going to say, hey, listen, uh, God told me you're my wife. No, but I'm, I'm afraid of this rejection. He put his feelings out there. She said, well, God didn't tell me. She said, so I'm about to go and pray and ask God. So she went to God uh, with her request, and a week later, God confirmed it. Um, and I said, so just like that, you just left the other guy and got with him? She's like, yeah, because I already was, he had my heart. The she connection said, was there. So I was like, God, how many people are in relationships with other people when somebody else still holds their heart? The majority, the vast majority now, real quick, I want to say this. For all the broke men out there listening to that story, there's hope, my there's brother. Hope, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> she left a millionaire for the broke, big belly pastor. All right, shout out to R.C. Blakes. We got love for him, okay? 
<laughs> there is hope. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, that's why I, I'm a firm believer that connection really supersedes so many other things. Facts. Now, let me, we joking, but listen, man, you should be trying to get financially stable. Yeah. Don't try to be broke, but it can happen. It just shows you how it's not always all about that. But back to uh, their people situation. People your heart. Yeah, people, you know, people... What happens is, again, so uh, what I've seen over all these years doing this is that in the vast majority of situations, people who have a connection don't work out the first time around because, again, people are, by that point in their life, there's a, so I feel the need to, this kind of hit my spirit again. So there's a great book I think everyone should check out called Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, Okay. Now, it's up to you if you want to believe the angle he's coming from. But in the book, he's angling from the perspective of he had an interview with the devil. Oh, and yeah. I feel the need to bring this up because in it, the devil mentions how his goal is to basically attack people as young as possible, yeah. to set them into the path of what they call drifting. Yeah. Okay. So I say that to say that what's happening is so many people have been attacked at a very young age, yep. whether it be sexual abuse, whether it just be unhealthy, toxic households, whatever it is. So now what's happened is by the time they become adults and they meet someone that they have this connection, this real love with, it is very difficult to deal with and handle. Mm. And so now... Again, because they're not mature enough, because they're maybe lacking healing, or because they've been brainwashed into thinking this type of thing doesn't really exist and it can't happen this fast, again, they run from it, they sabotage, whatever the case may be. Now, what many people end up doing, though, is they end up eventually go find someone else to be with who doesn't make them feel like that person they had a connection <laughs> with, but is good enough to be with. But I always say when there's a connection, it almost always comes back around, all right, at some point. The problem is when it comes back around, <laughs> what have we done in the meantime <laughs> to either allow ourselves to come together or have we made this more difficult? Yep. So what people typically do is they make it more difficult. They be married. Yes, they be married. They have kids. Yep. They've gotten into this career that now they don't know how to walk out of. And yep. hell, the career may have been driven by them trying to be distracted from, from by the... walking away from you. Yep. And you ain't even know that, all right? <laughs> Okay. The only reason they're doing what they do in their life is because they were trying to get over you yeah. and get over how they felt about the situation. And so now it makes it difficult for people to come back together. Now, some people are fortunate and they're able to make it work in the first time around. Or when they come back together, there isn't any more interference. So you'll have stories of people who reunite after 10, 15, yeah. 20 years and they go on to have the most amazing relationship that yeah. they ever had. And so that's why I always say, again, connection cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed. It is spirit. It is there. It is there. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just a matter of will you embrace it or not? And most people are not embracing it, which is why we see such a high divorce rate. It's not because marriage is bad. All right. It's not because people don't want relationship in marriage. It's because most people are married to the wrong person. Plain and simple. Oof. And they got married for, the ver for various wrong reasons. If we could correct that, though it's a tall task, that would change everything. Stefan, you woke up and chose violence. <laughs> I mean, that's just what it is. You just you just woke up and just chose violence. Like, I don't even know what to say, so I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to end this interview. It's going to be the raggliest uh, closure I've ever did on the interview. Thank you all for watching this. Um, Stefan, um, you have a course coming out. Um, are you still planning on doing that course? Yeah, so you can look out for it. It's the I'm going to have the How to Vet a Man course yes. and How to Vet a Woman course. So we're going to have them both. So stay tuned. So in the meantime, join my email list. Go to uh, askstefanspeaks.com. Submit your email. You can even ask a question while you're there. And then at least then you'll be notified once the courses go live. You already know this course is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Lord Jesus, I need to take a nap. You know, <laughs> you know, woke me out. Hey, y'all give it up for my boy, Stefan Speaks. That's what I'm going to call you. <laughs> Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally, 
Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Latarius R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Y'all know how much I love it when I get an opportunity to sit down and chop it up with one of my brothers. And so, uh, so honored to have Stefan Speaks, Stefan Labassier on the podcast. Uh, just to chop it up with him was absolutely amazing. And uh, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, this single life is a trip, options and opportunities. Now there's a stark difference between an option and opportunity. Knowing the difference saves a lot of time and potential heartbreak. This season of singleness for me is all about stewardship. It's about getting my house in order to prepare a place for you. It's about submitting to God and truly allowing him to have his way with my life. Me kneeling down in submission to Christ will cultivate the soil to build a foundation to wash you with the water of the word, patiently and anxiously waiting for you, my love, your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.